Hi guys. Hi. We're back from Otakon. <laughs> I'm Kiara. I'm Alex. And we got back from Otakon 2017. Yep. Uh, we're gonna do our loot first, our haul, uh, and then we'll get into thoughts about the convention and its new location. We've gone to Otakon for like five years now. Yeah. <laughs> A really long time now. Uh, this is the first year was in DC, so we have a couple thoughts on that. Uh, but yeah, we'll go through the loot first, so that if that's all you want to see, you can you leave. Can, after. You can just leave <laughs> after that. Uh, maybe we could add in a timestamp or something in yeah. the description. Uh, but yeah, do you want to go first? Uh, We're gonna start okay. with stuff from the dealer's room first. Yeah. So as you probably saw, we got fans. This is of... backwards on the screen, but it's it's the okay from One, One Punch, Punch Man. Man. And then they were also giving out Welcome to the Ballroom and Cling Freak Aoyama Toon fans. Uh, and then the Anaplex booth gave out like a lot of stuff. I don't think we actually got all of it, yeah. but uh, they gave out a lot of like Fate stuff. Like this is a player book for Fate Grand Order. Uh, there was also a calendar that I don't know yeah. what mine happened, <laughs> happened I, to mine. I don't remember uh, that. But yeah, and then I think that uh, one day they were giving out JoJo stuff. Yeah, they that... were giving out a JoJo fan like Sunday. They gave out like the Recreators poster. Then they there gave was a... us. Yeah, go ahead. There <laughs> was a token Rambu poster that they gave out. And that... then we got. Then we gave us tissues <laughs> as well. <laughs> Apparently they're very nice. I haven't tried them though. Yeah, it's but... from Anohana, the flower we saw that day, which I've never seen. Never so. seen it. Well, uh, so do you want to go first with, like, my, the thought-free stuff? <laughs> Alright. So, on to my page stuff. You guys, actually, you do know this because I played Dokkan Battle. I love Dragon Ball Z. Specifically, I love Trunks. <laughs> so, they had my son Trunks. This, I, uh, I have feelings about his blue hair, to be honest. But I really like this figure. Just beauty guru it. Um, I wanted his other figure. I'll put a picture up of it. But they that this was the year that they just stopped selling it in the dealer's <laughs> room. Figures. So it's like, well, I'll just get this one. This one's really nice. It's by Ben Presto, I believe, and they have really Lots nice. They have really nice price figures. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Bon Presto. Presto. Yeah. So they have. If you want Dragon Ball Z figures, I recommend Bon Presto. I also got little baby figure. Of again, my son Trunks. I think this was from the Bondi official booth. I I'm think so, sure. yeah, because they were selling a bunch of figures of like the ones that you put together. The model kits. Yeah, that I'm too old to do that. <laughs> I have no patience. He also has an interchangeable arm, so if you don't want him wielding his sword, eh, you can just pop that on. Bam. So, oh, he's just grabbing nothing. He's grabbing nothing. <laughs> he's ready to fight. They also had like energy. Like yeah. the yellow energy waves for, like for sale $10. for like ten bucks, which I told her she should get, but she didn't do <laughs> I it. I didn't do so it. I might do it. Spoil sport. Yep. <laughs> and then his torso fell off. His torso fell off. I think that's all I got from. I mean, one there was Coancy was in here. It's not. This is an artist. It's an artist, but they were in the dealer's room. But they had a Tem, and I love a Tem. I love Yu Gi Oh really pretty print. Uh, follow them, please. <laughs> and it's my turn. I got a lot a more lot. stuff than she did. Uh, to start off the weekend, like on Friday, I went to, I forget the booth name, but they basically, I think they come to like every convention and yeah. they sell a bunch of geek stuff like Dragon Age and like Mass Effect stuff, which I actually got my Mabari Hound from them last year. Uh, but this year they had Koromaru, <laughs> the good boy, the the good boy from Persona Four, per, yeah, Persona Three, who is my best Persona boy. I mean, look at this, look at this boy. Uh, it's official collector's item. It's not as nice as the one that came with the Persona Three movie Blu-rays, uh, but that one was like a hundred bucks, and this one is thirty-five. Uh, but I was really happy to see Koromaru like official stuff since he kind of doesn't get a lot. Uh, Persona 3 in general doesn't get a lot of figures or anything anymore, so I was really happy to see this. Uh, please let him be playable. Yes, if he's not. All night or whatever it's called. Uh, but yeah, so this was like the first purchase I made, <laughs> like two hours, like, like less than an hour after the dealer's room opened yeah. on Friday, and I don't regret it because 
Like I said, Corbar is best boy. <laughs> anyway. Oh, and his collar moves too, apparently, which I just realized. Uh, and then... Saturday. Oh, that's Sunday. Yeah, this, going is, by this day. is Sunday. I'm going by day. Okay. Uh, on Saturday... I went, search we basically just looked around the dealer's room a lot. We did actually buy a lot. Uh, however, I've started playing Fate Grand Order recently, which I haven't done any videos on because of the whole capture thing, and I got a new phone and all that, so it's been a nightmare. But I've been playing it quite a bit recently, uh, and I'm on the uh, Chapter 1 France chapter, and I really like Joan of Arc, or however they spell it in this game. Uh, so I saw this figure uh, for sale on Friday for like... It's thundering outside. Uh, I saw this figure for 30 bucks on Friday at a booth, and I held off on getting it because I was like, I don't know if I actually want a, grant, a Fate figure yet, uh, because I don't know if I'm super into the series, even though I really like this figure's design uh, and how it looks, especially for the price. Uh, unfortunately, when I went back to get it, they were all sold out, and every booth I checked that also had Fate figures were sold out except for one. And I couldn't find that booth again. Like, I found it once, and then I was unable to find it again. So I sent Kiera into the dealer's room with, like, 40 bucks to go find this one figure. And apparently when she got there, this was early Saturday, I'm pretty sure, mm -hmm. uh, she managed to find that one booth, and they only had two of her in stock so she grabbed one of the last ones and then come sunday there were literally none of her in the dealer's room at all that i could see uh but yeah this is one of the furyu figures uh which furyu makes really nice prize figures uh so and for the price it wasn't that bad i also contemplated picking up a mash figure but i didn't like how they did her hair so yeah uh this was probably like the most expensive purchase i made mm -hmm. uh and then Sunday was basically like our, I think this was Sunday, uh, was basically like our last day, like, go crazy, go find, you yeah. know, whatever we have left. Actually, I think this might have been Saturday. This was later Saturday. But I'm a huge Yuna fan from Final Fantasy, and I saw these for $25, which was actually the asking price on eBay and Amazon, so I decided to pick her up. Uh, it's the Yuna Final Fantasy Training Arts Kai. Uh, I'm not actually a huge fan of the style of these figures, but I really like Yuna and I really want more merchandise of her. Uh, because they actually had the Final Fantasy X-2 YRP figures, or the Play Arts Kai, but they were $100 each, and I was like, that's not... That, I don't have the money for all three of them. So this one comes with her summoner outfit from Final Fantasy X, as well as her gunner outfit from Final Fantasy X-2. Comes with some pans with guns, which I think I'm going to put onto her summoner outfit just because it's funny. Uh, but yeah, so those two were Saturday. Sunday, like I was saying, was pretty much the last day, like, clean up anything that we might have wanted. Uh, so I went to the Love Line booth because that was a thing. I got a blind bag of the world representative yes. girls the poster girl the world poster girls uh and i got ruby uh out of the blind box she and didn't get mari i didn't get american girl mari which is disgusting but then i also picked up the newest guilty kiss singles because they had it for 15 dollars, whereas every other booth had it for anywhere from 20 to 30 so i decided to pick it up because guilty kiss is like my favorite subunit in all of Love Live, and I really like this single CD of theirs. So yeah, and that was all I got from the dealer's room except for the free stuff. Uh, there wasn't actually a whole lot that I was like super interested in mm -hmm. in the dealer's room this year, which is surprising because usually there's like a couple things that I'm like, oh man, I really want this, but mm -hmm. I just don't have the money for yeah, it. Yeah, I think that was probably just the main thing of just... Oticon was kind of last minute for us, so we were scrambling to get money. Yeah. Also, like, there were, like, I usually get, like, a lot of straps in the dealer's room or, like, mm. the blind boxes. Yeah, there weren't them. And there weren't many that I was interested in because, like, they didn't have the Final Fantasy sets that I was interested in. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Overall, though, that I had a good haul from the, yeah. <laughs> from was the pretty good. dealer's room. <laughs> I also forgot. I got a Yu-Gi-Oh book, but I forgot to bring it with me. I'll probably put a picture up. You also got a new game strap. Oh yeah, I forgot. I got the the direct, not the director, but the um, 
the main, the Our lead league. artist. Yeah, I don't remember her name. I'm still watching New Game. So. Please watch New Game. It's really cute. Anyway, Artist Alley. Artist Alley, which is where I spent most of my money. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, do you want to go first? Yeah, because I don't have that much. You didn't show off. She got the while well, you're getting that ready. She yeah. got this from an arcade game that was in the gamer's room. Yeah, there was a Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> game, and I was like, oh my gosh. So I came back on Saturday to meme it up in a town. <laughs> And I won the first match, but then I lost the second match because the opponent had to get two hits off, and I'm angry. <laughs> but she did well. She did well for not there. knowing the rules yes. of the newest version of Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> now I have to go and get my dual terminal deck ready. <laughs> they actually, I think they actually expect you to have a dual terminal deck. I think so, yeah, because they once. let you scan in the cards. I'm just... So. Uh... Next year, next year, it's the return of a <laughs> <laughs> She's well, gonna beat that be arcade game. It'll probably be one of his other versions. Yami. Yeah. So, this isn't one of the first things, but this is the first thing that I touched. Someone was selling <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh stickers. On Sunday, we were going through the Artist Alley because I was trying to find someone else who had Yu-Gi-Oh straps, but they were sold out. And then I saw Yu-Gi-Oh stickers, and I'm like, close enough. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we're good. And like the, the grandpa one says, so just happy to be here. He is. <laughs> This one, it, it came in the pack of three, but my sister got sad because I bought her nothing, so I gave them to her, and she's like, thank you. So I only have the two packs. Eh. So, we have these. And any artists, I'm gonna list, like, a list. I got, like, a whole bunch of postcards, or business cards, so I'll just list all the artists in the description, since that would be easier. Please check them all out. They are all nice and lovely. And next, I got the Samurai Chomp Blueprint, which thanks to Alex for pointing it out. Because, like, I didn't see this. And she was like, hey, look, there's a Samurai Chomp Blueprint. And I'm like, what? Because no one makes merchandise of this. Please, make merchandise of Samurai Chomp <laughs> Don't make her buy the $400 for four figures. That. You're I, doing it? You yes. decided? I decided. I, it's as big as my head, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> When that I means get you're money. committed to getting all of them, though. I know. <laughs> I In just case you didn't know, uh, First Four Figures is making all three of the main cast of Samurai Champloo, and they've just put the Mugen up for pre-order. I'll put a picture up of what he looks like. He looks so nice, but he's also big, and he's $449. <laughs> he's <a fourth. laughs> but you know what? I, I'll, I'll do it for him. Uh... And then I didn't buy these. Someone ex one of the artists gave these to me. They're BTS prints of J Hope and Jimin because he saw that I was wearing a BTS shirt and they were like, Hey, who's your favorite person? Here you go. You can have these prints. I'm not selling them. So I'm like, Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think I have their card too, so they're in the description. Please check all these people out. I think that's all I okay. Got. Oh no. I can't believe I forgot my boys. <laughs> I'm idle trash. You guys know this already. So I got the good boys, Kuro and Moogie. I was cosplaying some Moogie on Friday, so I saw these and I'm like, I have to do it. Yeah, the artist had like a whole book of like, basically, I think it was at every Ensemble Stars boy yeah. they had a charm of. Yeah. So... I'm actually, I'm really happy they did like his Halloween outfit because I like his Halloween outfit. I like every outfit of Samugi. Samugi's, Samugi's my best boy. boy. Oh geez, is it my turn yeah. now? Okay. Uh... <laughs> Today we're gonna. I, I wonder what Alex's favorite character is. Um. So for some context, I finally broke down and actually bought like a bag to make an Ida bag out of. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do my favorite persona, Arcana, which is lovers, and I already have a lot of. Rise stuff, and I have like the one piece of official Lisa merchandise that exists. So I was like, I'm just gonna make a lover's bag with like one Fuka in the corner. Uh, but I ended up buying a lot more than, than I planned. I'm gonna start with the non persona stuff because otherwise, <laughs> gonna be here for a while. Uh, and it's all Voltron, so I apologize. Uh, so on Friday, I bought these three mini prints. Uh, they had the whole group there for like, I think 50 for all of the small prints, but so I decided to just get my favorites. 
Uh, I got Allura, obviously, because she's like my number one favorite Voltron character, or VLD character. I got Keith. Uh, because he's like my second favorite slash time for favorite just because I like him a lot. But I ended up getting Lance because they're boyfriends and they have to be together and I also didn't want the <laughs> purse at the table to think that like I shipped Keith Alura or whatever because I didn't want that judgment. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay if you ship it. It's not that I dislike it. I just <laughs> didn't Stay want them to be, the be weird. Uh, and then I bought a little sticker set because they were only selling these as a set so I couldn't just get one of the Voltron kids. So here's Keith. Here's Allura. I, I mostly just wanted the Allura, honestly, but they're all really cute. Here's Hunk. Pidge. This is my daughter and I love her. Uh, Lance and Shiro. Uh, like Kira, I don't know exactly which artist did what, and I was really bad about picking up business cards. This one actually has name on the back, which you can't see because it's backwards. <laughs> but uh, oh, okay. I also just wanted to show that they had like a little Keith Lance picture in the back of them taking a selfie and Keith looking miserable. Uh, I think, was that all my Voltron stuff? I, I thought guess. I had one more thing. Did well. I show the bookmark? I didn't actually show the front of the bookmark, so <laughs> here's the front of the bookmark. It's the whole group, including Space Uncle Karan. Uh, okay. <laughs> now on to the Persona stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, wait. I think everything's gotten mixed up on my bed. I apologize. This is a professional uh, group, I swear. Oh, there's one more Voltron thing. I got this little Allura pin which is really cute, and I love her. And then, just leading it off of that, uh, I just got the buy three for, like, five, so I also got a Rise. And an On. And I hope you're used <laughs> to seeing this face. I hope you like seeing this face, because that's all you're going to see for the rest of this <laughs> this, this haul. Uh, so, yeah, I went on an Anne shopping, an on shopping spree, uh, which everybody pronounces her name differently, so every time I was like, oop, it got blurry. Okay. Anyway, anytime I went up to a booth, I was like, I want the on strap. They were very, like, who? So, I think her name is supposed to be on. I'm pretty sure. But if I actually slip up and say Anne, I apologize. Uh, so I got a lot of different charms of her. I got this double-sided one with a little Phantom Thief phone. Oop. So here's... Here's one side. And then here's the other. It's her and her... Panther outfit. Uh, let's see what else. Got this one. It's also double sided. She has a different expression on the other side, which is a little bit hard to see. I don't know why the lighting's acting kind of weird. <laughs> I have a lot of on. I apologize. <laughs> this one is single sided. It's her in her school outfit. Uh, you want to help me unwrap these? Sure. <laughs> uh, and then I got these two as a pair. It's Makoto and On. Uh, they're both double sided because this is like my Persona Five OTP, and I wish that they could date. <laughs> uh, then I got this On pin. It's heart shaped. Uh. And got this one, which isn't showing up super well. We tried. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then this one. I'm gonna put it against the black shirt. <laughs> uh, I think that's all the charms. Uh, but then I also picked up this fan book, <laughs> which is called So Call Me Your Lover. I'm sorry, it's backwards. Uh, it's by Radio Star Killer. Uh, I don't want to show. I'm just gonna show like the pages that they let you show for preview, uh, because I don't want anybody to like just not buy it. it. Yeah. yeah. So 
so I'm just gonna show the first couple pages. But it's really cute, it's really sweet, it's super like, they have the suit, they're just going on a study date, this isn't like a weird, <laughs> weird <laughs> thing. Look, it's, it's just really cute. And yeah, I think that's everything. It was an odd palooza. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Was that I think everything, good. I think? Uh, I yeah, and then yeah. we have a bunch of artist business cards. I apologize if I bought something from you and didn't pick up your uh, business uh, card. Uh, yeah, yeah, she probably Just... picked it up even if we weren't together at the same time. Uh, yeah, and there, there, um, there are going to be some artists in the description that we didn't buy anything from, but that we saw that were like, oh, hey, that's cool. Yeah. We want to buy something from them later. Yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't get to buy everything I wanted. There were like some really nice Persona yeah. charms that I just didn't have the money for at the end that I hadn't seen until like Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I apologize if I stopped by your booth and seemed really interested like, and then just didn't buy anything, yeah. I will probably be looking for you on, like, Ticktail. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but everybody in the Arts Alley was super talented this year. A lot of really good stuff, yeah. uh, especially compared to the dealer's room, at least for oh, me. Yeah. There was a lot more that I was interested in. Uh, and then, last yeah. thing, which kind of leads into our own con thoughts. Uh, I was cosplaying as Allura on Saturday, and I ran into a Lance cosplayer, and he gave and she, or they gave me this necklace, which was really nice of them. Took some selfies with me, which are on my Instagram. So, anyway, we're going to talk about Oticon now. Right. So if you were just here for the stuff, <laughs> bye guys. you can leave. <laughs> but before you do that, please follow us on Instagram. Yeah, please follow us on Instagram, because I don't use my idle Twitter that much more. So please follow me. Give me that promo. <laughs> okay, so let's start off with the dealer's room. It's a lot bigger. Yeah. A lot bigger, which I appreciate. Uh, I think that there's still some disorganization stuff that they need to figure out. Like, they really, really, really need to put numbers over the tables. Yes. There were a couple booths that had the numbers, but it wasn't enough. Mm -mm. So we ended up having to find things based on where the industry panels were. Because those were the only yeah. things that, like, could actually show us where anything was. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's just like... I probably I'll probably email them or something about this. Just like either hang something from like the ceiling, like the, what they did for like the Anapolex or Funimation booths, or like just have columns at both ends that yeah, can help out with that. Cause just going back and forth from like the dealers list to the map and guidebook is not fun. Yeah, which I will talk about the guidebook maps and everything in a bit, but. <laughs> For now, we'll focus on dealer's room. I think that they should also print out pieces of paper. It doesn't have to be fancy with the booth name on it to give to the booth people to hang up on their booth somewhere just so that mm. people know which booth they're at. where they're at. Because like a lot of places sell straps and a lot of places sell figures, but yeah. like they all they all have different names in like the dealer's list, but yeah. they don't have it anywhere on their actual thing except if they're like a big company think, yeah so i think if otakon could just spare like some printer paper and some <laughs> ink and just put like the booth number and the booth name yeah and then just have make like mandate that the dealers have to hang it up on their booth somewhere yeah. that would make navigation a lot easier as well as make it easier for people who see something earlier be able to find it again yeah like in the case of <laughs> my Joan of arc figure because that was a nightmare trying to re-find that place mm. Uh, with only knowing, like, it's somewhere near the Anaplex booth. Yeah. Uh, so that would really help. Uh, overall, the selection was kind of uh, eh this year. Yeah, I, th I think just a lot of people, they had a lot of, there was a lot of the same stuff at every booth. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of Dragon Ball. Yeah. <laughs> which I expected because Super's out. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of the same Dragon Ball stuff. Yeah. Which, you know, again, it's to be expected. There was a lot of Fate stuff. I think that they way overstocked some of their, like, Saber stuff uh, and mm -hmm. didn't stock enough, like, Joe oh, Arc or yeah. any of the other ones. Uh, um, I was surprised at the lack of, like... Wow, I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Just, like, uh, a lot of the figures that came out recently in general, like, there weren't a whole lot of Nendoroids or Figmas mm, around this yeah. year. There were only a couple of tables that were actually selling them. Yeah, like a lot of them, a lot of the Nendos I saw were ones that probably came out like a year or more ago. Yeah, some of them were like two or three years ago. Yeah. Like I don't, re I don't remember seeing any new ones, mm. uh, except for like a couple. Yeah. Uh, there were a lot of prize figures, which is every year. Yeah. Uh, 
So that's not surprising. I was surprised at the lack of, like, actual big figures this year. Yeah. Like, there weren't a whole lot of scales for sale, except at, like, the Good Smile, uh, you know, partner booths. Yeah. Uh, there were, I only saw, like, one booth with actual altar figures, maybe two, mm. which was surprising. Which I know that maybe they just think not a lot of people come to spend that much money mm. on a figure, so it's not worth it. Yeah. But it would have been nice to have a little bit of variety. variety. Uh... Um, and there was like only like one book place this year. There were two. There, like, yeah, there was Kino that the bookstore that comes every year, and then yeah. there was like maybe one more. Yeah, I'm not talking about manga, by the way. Like there were there were still like yeah. the same amount of manga. There was no Dojinshi booth this year. I, yeah, I can remember seeing. Yeah. There were a couple like scattered Yaoi. Yeah. <laughs> Dojinshi <laughs> everywhere. Like, no, no dealer was really set dedicated to selling Dojinshi. Which I don't usually buy it, but it was also a little bit concerning to me that a lot of the Yaoi was just like. Out in the sitting open. out with nobody ID checking so yeah. I'm going to assume that that was all safe for work stuff but when they mark it as yaoi yeah, I tend to like, believe uh, that it's not uh, um, so just I think that Otakon needs to watch that and definitely make yeah. sure <laughs> yeah because that, that can lead them to a lot of trouble yeah I also there were a couple booths in the artist alley that I thought were funny but I also thought that maybe they needed to regulate a bit more there was like this one that was selling body pillows of like oh, yeah na- near naked dudes or like completely naked dudes with like barely covering and also yeah. naked women uh and they were just out in the open no covering yeah. or anything like that which again i'm fine with uh but it was a little bit like jarring because usually most cons are pretty good about being like you can't display this on the yeah. outside of your booth or without being covered so especially since there were actually kids walking around mm. Like, I'm not saying don't sell that stuff or hide it all away, but the fact that it was, like, on the outside of yeah. booths and, like, just very freely in the middle of the floor was a little weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, that went into the artist alley like, but uh, that, <laughs> yeah. that's all I really had to say about the dealer's room. Yeah, I will say there were actually, like, a couple booths, I think, that were maybe new this year. Like, I don't remember seeing, like, the Crane game last year. No, they weren't there last yeah. year. Yeah, so that was pretty cool to see that they were... And I don't know if that was in response to, hey, we have more space to use now, but it was kind of cool to see that they were branching out to different types of booths, so I'd like to see them do that in the future, even though I'm not good at Crane games. Yeah. Uh, was, it actually, was there actually a hentai VR game in the dealer's room this year, too? I'm pretty sure. Uh, I, I feel like they're probably... Someone posted something on Twitter. I heard. I don't know if this is true I don't know not. if it's true or not. I'm not going to say what they said, but it's just... It was bad. Apparently there was a hentai game. That's all bad. I know. I, there was a VR game, but I don't know exactly what they were playing. Uh, but oh. yeah, please please watch that. <laughs> if, that well, if that is a thing, please watch that. Or at least regulate um, it a bit stricter. Mm. Uh... uh I guess we can go to Artist Alley, which oh, Artist Alley was Alley. pretty. It was, uh, if you Plug you probably pod. yeah <laughs> you probably heard by now that the one of the sewer pipes burst and like two two or like two or three artists merchandise was basically all destroyed, and obviously that's not Otakon's fault. They couldn't have seen that happening that's more of the convention's fault yeah. of like apparently the roof was above our alley was leaking the day before yeah because like, of like some lighter storms so the fact that they didn't really do anything to check it yeah especially when the roof was already leaking was a little bit disappointing like, eh. uh, especially since they actually did set out buckets and everything for the leaking yeah uh but again, that's not really Oticon's fault. Like the staff from Oticon apparently was really good about mm-hmm. evacuating and helping the artists move their stuff and everything mm-hmm. like that. Uh, but just for the convention center, the convention center staff needs to be a little bit more informed, I yeah. think, because uh, the con staff was all great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Artist Alley was nice. Uh, again, I think that the same thing for the dealer's room applies there where you need yeah. to have numbers or the booth name which oh, a lot yeah. of the studios did have their names on the front of the table some didn't but it was a little bit hard to tell what row you were in mm-hmm. at every time so if you wanted to be like hey there's a samurai shampoo print it's like where it's like it somewhere in the I middle don't know. <laughs> it's like yeah help to at least get some sort of bearing on where you are. Yeah. And obviously in terms of, you know, FUDCON and Sunday, you can't really help with that because they have to move people around. But yeah. like in normal circumstances. Yeah. Even on Friday, we were having a bit of trouble navigating. Yeah. Uh, 
That's, I mean, it, the space was a lot nicer, a lot bigger, mm-hmm. uh, especially for Dr. Sally and Dealer's room, because the fact that you could actually move without <laughs> breathing up yeah. against each other's necks was really nice. That was nice. Uh, I also liked all the industry people they brought. Like, I don't think they had a Love Live booth last year. I don't think that... Yeah. I think that uh, Funimation and Aniplex and Crunchyroll were, like, the only big ones last year, but I could yeah. be wrong. Uh, so just having more there, like, I like the Bondi setup a lot, like, mm-hmm. the fact that they had oh, all the yeah, stuff that was, that was really for cool. sale set up, like, on the outside so you could actually look, and then you could go in and actually pick it up was really nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it would be cool to see more stuff like that. Like, there's mm-hmm. a lot, of, it would be nice to see some, like, this is going to sound really weird, but, like, some more, like, American toy company type stuff oh, outside yeah. of Funko, so, like, uh, I know that, like, like, first four figures, but cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I know that, like, there's a company in America that makes, like, the Voltron Lions from VLD, uh, but the only Voltron stuff I could find in the dealer's room were the really old Go mm-hmm. Lion slash Legendary Defender giant robot that was, like, this big. Uh, so it'd be nice if they had that sort of stuff mm-hmm. in the future. That's not really something that would have control, but maybe yeah. they could, like, invite people other than Funko Pop people. <laughs> There were so many Funko Pops. There, the wall of Funko Pop just it keeps growing. It grows. I can't wait till this just in the whole convention floor is just Funko Pop. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I talk about day by day. All right. Or so, do you want to just talk about the uh, convention center as a whole, really quick? Yeah, we can do that. Um. I I like the location. I do have my pros and cons about it like i like how spaced out it is we're not grinding up on <laughs> each other to each other in it's the hallway just, i do like that my one concern just because i'm 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 getting old <laughs> and walking 50 <laughs> feet brings me back pains <laughs> i i don't i'm not the biggest fan of how spread out everything is which i mean given that it's a large convention center it's to be expected both inside and outside the convention center yeah um like, I know anytime we were like, let's go to the dealer's room. And inside, I'm like, ugh, we gotta walk all the way to Halsey. Why? Yeah, it was, as regarding, like, the area around it, it was pretty nice. There mm-hmm. was a lot of construction going on. Yeah. Which, it's decent. Okay, in terms of the convention center, which the Baltimore Convention Center dealt with this too, in terms of photo shoots, there's never really... <laughs> A good place for it. Okay, like, you know what? But to be fair, to the Baltimore Convention Center, they were better about it yeah. than this one. This one shoved the biggest photo shoots on a staircase. It's just... And, and not had, even the entire staircase. Like, maybe the like first... Like, the first steps of the staircase. And then maybe, like, and like two yards. Yeah. No, no of, not even that. It was like... Well, actually, yeah, maybe. It was, like, about as tall as I am, which is, yeah. like, five feet. Uh, and it's just... The Fire Emblem shoot, in particular, at the front was, entrance, oh my God. yeah, was too big for that area. Mm-hmm. And I think that this was actually the biggest area because that's also where they had the Pokemon shoot, yeah, and uh, the JoJo shoot mm-hmm. on Saturday. Uh, the other photo shoot area that we were at, the L uh, Street Bridge in front of the video game room, yeah, the lighting was awful. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know they can't really control it, but yeah. I wish that they would have at least moved it to the other side if it had to be there and put mm. the information booths on that side. Yeah. Uh, I still think the area was too small mm-hmm. for that sort of thing, especially since it was a pretty, it was as high, tra- I think that that was like the highest traffic area other than oh, like yeah. the bottom floor, basically. Uh, mm. So just having people having to like shuffle out of the photo shoot and then trying to get around into the video game hall. It wasn't as bad as the staircase and the constant stream of people trying to get up the stairs. It, yeah. Uh, but it was still pretty rough. But yeah. I'm glad that it was a little bit smaller on Friday, so it's a bit hard to tell exactly. Yeah. Which, those were the two big photo shoots we went to. Mm-hmm. Um, um, it's just, thinking on it, there's not really any place in the convention center except there was a place where Dantsu Dapansu had their gathering, the idol group thing that yeah. we saw. And that was across from panel one. I don't know how big the area is, but I know Dantsu Dapansu's gatherings are very huge at times. 
So maybe just the thing I think for there would be the lighting. Yeah. But there doesn't really seem to be the <laughs> emoticon a say. really good place. Yeah. In in the convention center. And even outside the convention center too, like nearby, I don't really know if there's there's a Carnegie library and in the church. The church, the was church. Really nice that everybody was having their private zoo there. Yeah. Uh I think that since they have the Marriott lobby, they could have yeah, probably true. used it. I don't know mm. what the... Well, actually, I don't know if the Marriott would have let them do Probably that. not. Not a huge group like okay. Fire Emblem. Yeah. Plus, because... Yeah. But uh, I they, they had some nice photo locations in mm. there. Uh, so maybe if they wanted to talk to them about that, yeah. it would be a nice place to do it. Uh, there were a couple other floors in the Marriott as well, which yeah, we didn't we really, really go, go to. to so... We don't know what the Marriott looks like. Yeah, so. we don't know what the Marriott looks like. Uh, but yeah, uh, same thing applies to the dealer's room and the artist alley and just the convention center. They really needed to have more signs up yeah. about where things were at. Like, I don't actually remember seeing a, like, panel one is this way mm-hmm. or, like, a panel one sign outside of anything but yeah. panel one. Which I don't know how the, I don't remember exactly how the Baltimore what handled it but since it was a smaller place it was all, and like everything was more yeah. compact it was not as hard to find things yeah uh so i think just some more signs that are like hey panel one is this way or yeah. like up the stairs and like the dealer's room is this way while the artist alley is mm. this way would really help a lot yeah uh, that's near by area yeah I was, it's really classy way too classy for <laughs> yeah. a day convention uh, uh, lots of expensive stuff yeah it's expensive it's DC uh, which I mean it's DC yeah I mean, it's not it, I wish that the convention center was in a more like touristy part mm-hmm. of DC but that's not really Otakon's fault or yeah. the convention center's fault uh, but you can tell this is like a business district, like, but just by the people there and like yeah. what shops are there and the restaurants are there. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple of cheap places, but like the, even like McDonald's and everything was kind of yeah far away. So it's like pretty much we had to get a lift for a like, couple times of the day. Yeah. So. Mostly because of shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, if you have comfortable shoes, it's not going to be yeah. as rough. But if you're wearing, like, really elaborate cosplays... Yeah, if you're cosplaying... And... Like, I was in Allura, which wasn't even that complicated, but I still felt like I couldn't walk from the hotel to the convention center. Yeah. Just because it was so far away. Uh, well, not not far away, yeah. but just far enough that it was annoying. Mm. In which... I know there were, like, a lot of people who were, like, relying on the metro, which, like, during the weekend when they shut down the red line <laughs> to one way, it's like, I don't see how they did that. Like, so, I guess, for people thinking about Otakon, don't rely heavily on the metro. Just I'm hoping by next year that they finish up most of that, because it looks like they're trying to. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, if you can get a place closer to the convention center so that you don't need to take the metro, that would probably be the best idea. Yeah. Because, like I said, on Sunday when we were trying to get back to our train... They closed down the red line, and we wouldn't have made it all the time unless we called a lift, yeah. which was unfortunate because we had already paid metro the metro fee, mm. uh, and we didn't find out until after we were like in the thing. Yeah. So thanks, DC. Uh, uh, I yeah. guess we can go by day now. Yep, Friday. We well, do a start Thursday. Thursday. We got there, went to go pick up our tickets, and at first it was like, oh god, line con, and then it actually went really fast. Yeah. So. Good on you, Otakon. You I... actually figured out the line. <laughs> now to mess it all up next yeah, year. Yeah, I'm sure that it'll be screwed up next year. Yeah. Uh, uh, I thought they didn't have the boxery this year. Apparently. Yeah, it, it wasn't there. free this year, which is just like... I don't know if I I don't know if the Matsuri that he was talking about was the same thing that I was thinking of. I I think that maybe they just did not have it this year and instead they replaced that with like the anime yeah. Matsuri thing with like TM Revolution and, and if they did project. let us know because that's what the staff member told us. So we just went back to the hotel and fell asleep until yeah. the next day basically. <laughs> or watched Food Network, I guess. Yeah. Food Network was good. <laughs> <laughs> uh Friday. Friday. We cosplayed I was Samugi in the morning. There were no other All the Stars. There people. was, like, two other people, <laughs> even though, like, five people said that they were cosplaying All Stars, and they did it Saturday. Yeah. 
So that was unfortunate. I was cosplaying as Patty from Fire Emblem 4 all day. If you know who that is, congratulations, you're the only one. <laughs> Not even the other Fire Emblem 4 people who showed up for our shoot really knew who I was, except for like one, two people. Two. So that wasn't exactly mm. fun and it wasn't a comfortable costume. Mm. Uh, I probably will not wear her again <laughs> unless we get a Fire Emblem 4 remake. Mm. Uh, but yeah, then she cosplayed Julius again. Yeah. Got to meet her mom and dad and yes. sister. I got grounded. Yeah, she got grounded because she I murdered her mom. Yeah, that too. <laughs> uh, and then I think we changed out and then we went, went to, to the panel. Yeah, we went to the an- craziest anime deaths oh, panel, yeah. which was a lot of fun. I like that one a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh. I have a whole list of anime I need to watch because <laughs> no. of how stupid it was. Uh, but yeah, the panel runner was really good. Mm-hmm. Super organized, knew exactly what he was talking about. Mm. Uh, there was a lot where it was like, this is available on Blu-ray. It was sponsored by <laughs> this company, yeah. and this fu- which was a little bit jarring. But other than that, I mean, I know why he has to do that. Yeah. It was like, go check out the booth downstairs at the dealer's room to pick up this DVD. <laughs> and it's like... You showed me one clip from this. Like, can you By give me, DVD. like, a streaming option or something? <laughs> so that was a little bit jarring, but other than that, it was a top-notch was good panel. panel. Really good panel. Uh, Saturday. Mm. <laughs> what uh, did I do in the morning? Long Fu, that's right. <laughs> Long. I was Allura all day. Uh, shout out if you were a Voltron person or you recognized me. Mm. I had at least five people call me Space Mom while I was wandering around trying to find Joan of Arc. Uh, three people give me hugs. <laughs> so I apologize if I was awkward. I was like, I, I wasn't sure if my makeup had set properly and I was mm. kind of sweaty. So if I was just like, eh, uh, that wasn't you. I'm just not super good with physical contact. Mm. Uh, so yeah. Uh, you're also Zelda. I was also Space Mom Zelda, apparently, (laughs) which is fair because my pink, I or my pip, yeah, my pink lip liner broke, so I had to use Kiara's red that she used for Julia's. So I looked very much like a Shika, and (laughs) I also didn't get to do my hair exactly. Mm. I didn't get to style my wig exactly like Allura, so it was a lot flatter than I wanted it to be. But I'll probably fix that for next time I wear her. Uh, But otherwise, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot more comfortable than I thought it would be, except Mm. for the shoes, which were too small <laughs> but that's fine uh, then... uh i did the tem <laughs> which <laughs> went about as well I... as it usually does she got stopped like every five feet i think it, it actually went better this year than last year there you go it's just there were like no other Yu-Gi-Oh cosplayers until sunday i mean friday there was another tem and there was like a joey and there was like there were like two or three kaibas saturday to where are all my where friends? Where are all the Yu-Gi-Oh people? They all went to the shoot that I didn't go to because I thought it was F5. You did uh, get an autograph. I got the autograph of the guy who played Dark Magician and Mahato in Yu-Gi-Oh. And he was like, holy crap, your costume is so good. Can I get a picture of you? So I was like, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, when we were walking around together, it was like every five feet. It was like Pharaoh <laughs> or Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> and like that like that was it Adam Adam cause like only one person we met that day was able to pronounce a tem as a tem uh, we went to the game room we played some Persona 4 dancing all night yeah. which I was terrible at she was good at uh I think that was all we did in the game room actually yeah. I played another rhythm game too but I don't remember the name of it uh and then we went yeah. to the mask partially. Partially. We reached the point of the Pokemon Team Rocket and Team Skull. That one was really nice. I yeah. like that one. Uh, we watched the uh, Fire Emblem one. Yeah, uh, that one Pegasus was really Sisters. good. Those guys had amazing costumes. Like uh, We yeah. saw them in the hall earlier, and they looked amazing. Yeah. So I don't think that the lighting on stage really did it justice. It's, that uh, is... <laughs> I know one of the people she did ask, it's Kit Kat cosplay. She did Takumi last year. It's They're amazing. Yeah, but anyway, I do have one thing to say about the masquerade of what we saw of it. The lighting for the camera was awful. Uh, Like, the lighting on stage looked fine, Mm. but we were in the back because we didn't want to block anybody with Kira's wig. 
but we, so we were looking mostly at the cameras and like everybody was just cast in shadow so mm-hmm. i don't know what camera settings they were using but they need to fix that yeah, for next year because it, it was, was like impossible to see half the people especially during like the hall cosplay contest where it's like you want to see oh, all yeah. those details so that was a little bit disappointing we mm. ended up leaving a bit early to go to the voltron pajama party which then my phone almost died so we didn't really get to participate very much in it uh, but i did meet some cool people got to take some selfies got some compliments talk a little bit so Fun stuff. Uh, and then we went to Wait in Line. Anime for the booby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know uh, what I expected with that panel. <laughs> I I expected more boobs. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I was a little bit disappointed about the amount of boobs they showed. It could have been more. It they could have had more. some more ridiculous ones. Yeah. Uh I feel like they could benefit a lot from going more like the craziest anime deaths and just mm. like having like clip after clip after yeah. clip. Uh, they were super like enthusiastic and mm-hmm. fun uh, hosts, but they would also respond directly to people like in front of them, which we couldn't hear. Mm. So it was a little bit yeah. like, it was like a little bit interactive, but also not interactive enough yeah. to like be qualified as interactive. Yeah. Uh, so I think my advice for that would just be show more, show more boobs. Yeah, show just, more, just don't be, don't be, don't be stingy with the boobs. We yeah. waited in line for an hour to see <laughs> boobs, boobs just going. So we, we need to get going. Just show more boobs. That's that's my only opinion on that panel. Is more boobs. Uh, otherwise, it was a good panel. They were they were cool. I yeah. liked them. Uh, I was kind of surprised to see two women running it. Yeah, I was, I was I wasn't actually really happy about. I was like, oh. Uh, so yeah, especially uh, like. Two black women. I was yeah, like, I know, oh right? God. I wasn't expecting that, but I'm happy that it happened. So thank you for the boob panel. Just show more boobs. <laughs> uh, then we went home, <laughs> and then Sunday I didn't cosplay. I didn't cosplay. Uh, we walked around the dealer's room with Artist Alley one last time, picked up our last stuff, and then when we got coffee, <laughs> waited for the train to come. Then we rode the train home, and now and we're now here. We're here tired yeah but i had to go to work the next morning which wasn't fun <laughs> me too so. so all in all i think for me and a lot of people we were expecting this to be like this is the last otakon because they're gonna fuck it up some way and they didn't yeah it was I, okay yeah it was okay i was more like eh yeah on it, which honestly i've been feeling kind of that way about otakon for the last couple of years it's mm. not that i dislike anime conventions now or anything like that because i still have fun cosplaying and everything it just feels like the crowd, at least at Otakon, mm-hmm. has shifted a bit. Yeah. Uh, which may not be the case. I was just running into the wrong people. But there were there were quite a few kind of rude people this year. Mm. At least that I ran into. Uh, so, just be nice to each other, guys. Yeah. If somebody is like, somebody compliments your cosplay, just be yeah. like, thank you. Don't yeah. be rude to the cosplayers. There were a couple of photographers that were kind of rude. Mm. Uh yeah. All in all, I don't know if it's my last Otakon. Uh, I mean, it's not going to be like first choice, like heck yeah. But if it's like if I want something to do, I wouldn't mind going again. Yeah. I mean, I was kind of like that. Like, the reason we went to Baltimore, the Baltimore one every year, was because I was in college and I only came home for the summer. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm graduated. <laughs> The uh, world is kind of ours, question mark. Yeah, so, I don't know. We might yeah. try and check out some other conventions this year, just to see. Like, I always wanted to check out MAGFest, but I was in school at that time, so. We can do that. Well, that's, that's yeah, December. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, that's January. Yeah, we can, we can figure yeah. it out, but. But, yeah, I don't know. It's not, it's not, I don't know why everybody on Twitter is calling it, like, a doomed con, because honestly, outside of the blood con which only took like an hour to fix for the most part uh and they've already said that they are compensating all the artists who lost merch Mm, which Uh, is good yeah so other than that it was fine yeah i don't know of anything else disastrous that happened so Mm. i mean i think that they could use a bit more variety in their panel stuff and all that but Mm. it was just like every other oticon yeah (laughs) it was it was okay yeah but yeah, so I think that's it. Mm-hmm. We rambled. Ram- I this rambled. is like, what, 50 minutes? This will minutes be like 50 minutes long. Unedited. Uh, but yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. Yay. We might put out a video sometime, maybe. 
Tell Fire Emblem to put oh. out Jug's Roll. Do it. And so I can cry and spend money on the game again. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.